Dear Dhamma friends, uh, I'm addressing to all of you not as a, a teacher or a guru and whatever, uh, whatever I say here is not a sermon of any kind actually. I'm just another um, a fellow uh, practitioner like yourself and uh, trying to share some uh, thoughts and experiences that I have um, while um, living a um, Buddhist life, one could say. And so therefore, <clears throat> uh, whatever I've conveyed uh, in the Tibetan uh, version, uh, to some of you uh, it may be helpful, to some of you it may be uh, causing probably more confusion. Uh, it's always possible because uh, um, in the uh, Tibetan sort of um, mentality, uh, of, often uh, things are conveyed in a very sort of uh, honest and blunt and pragmatic way. And so therefore, uh, sometimes uh, um, due to language barriers uh, or a lack of um, uh, understanding of um, uh, uh, to say, uh, language, we could <clears throat> um, somehow draw more uh, confusion and than uh, actual wisdom. And so therefore, uh, I'm now trying to basically summarize what I said in Tibetan in here in English. And so in short, uh, the message that I was trying to uh, convey is that of uh, trying to take care of one's own karma. Uh, that's uh, sort of my uh, way of translating uh, the word uh, that was uttered by uh, our historical Buddha Shakyamuni. In Tibetan, uh, it says, Le Dagriche, Le Dagrinzu. And so, Le as in karma, Dagriche as in sort of. Um, Make it your own. Probably that's one way. Uh, take care of your own karma or uh, make the karma one's own. And of course, uh, when we say that, uh, um, it may sound in some ways uh, deep and in some ways profound and in some ways very, very confusing. Probably all those are just the same thing. But nevertheless, I personally feel that uh, that is probably the most uh, appropriate um, uh, thing personally for, for myself. Although, of course, I'm well here uh, in India, um, both myself and uh, my family, uh, we are well here. Um, but nevertheless, um, uh, there are um, now, by now, countless and countless of um, uh, human beings um, who are affected by this uh, pandemic um, known as uh, COVID-19 or coronavirus, uh, which is really devastating uh, so many um, uh, lives. And so therefore, um, when we look at uh, the people who have uh, died from this disease, and people who are sick uh, from this disease. And uh, then on top of it, um, when we look at uh, the officials, uh, the medical care uh, system or uh, personnels, as well as um, volunteers, um, and basically the whole social system doing their very best uh, with whatever knowledge, uh, whatever experience they have, uh, of course, um, uh, um, they are truly inspiring and uh, they really require, how to say, our um, um, appreciation, uh, to say the least. But at the same time, when we think of, uh, in this case, the victims of this disease, <clears throat> it's really uh, disturbing, of course. Um, we almost somehow feel that probably this is it, that this is the end of the world. And uh, uh, that kind of fear, that kind of uh, panic, uh, 
Although, of course, we could say it's unnecessary. Uh, we shouldn't fear, we shouldn't panic. But nevertheless, um, um, when uh, it happens, it's sort of, it happens. There's nothing else that one can do. So, um, personally for myself, uh, when I uh, think of um, this uh, ongoing situation, uh, even myself, I could also resort to basically fear and um, panic. Uh, but nevertheless, um, not to say that I have found the solution, but uh, when I really uh, try to take time and uh, reflect on what Buddha has said, uh, it, it has really the most uh, um, needed and uh, most beneficial uh, quality uh, when I th um, focus on Buddha Dharma. And so therefore, uh, from all of the teachings, uh, if I try to summarize, then uh, the most appropriate one that I can think of in very simple words is none other than to uh, take care of one's own karma. Uh, and the reason why I find that this is most appropriate and beneficial is because um, how to say, um, we as practitioners, um, we are supposed to, in a sense of, um, uh, from a perspective of mission, one could say, that we are supposed to save everyone, that we are supposed to liberate everyone. <clears throat> and so therefore, uh, when we have that kind of mindset, and then on top of it, uh, if we experience and witness, and even ourselves, if we experience, uh, if we, uh, how to say, directly succumb to these diseases, um, then um, it just sets up an impossible task. And uh, the only solution that we, uh, we could have is just basically give in to fear. And so therefore, um, I think, um, not just that I think, but I really feel from the core of my heart that uh, um, taking care of one's own karma is really uh, a profound way of dealing with what we are experiencing right now. And so, um, <clears throat> uh, the way I understand uh, taking care of one's own karma is that um, um, the moment we are born, uh, or one could say from the beginningless time, but probably something that is uh, uh, easier to grasp and to, easier to understand and relate is that from the moment we are born, uh, how to say, uh, we are naturally sort of uh, subjected to change, naturally subjected to impermanence. There is simply no other way. And uh, um, of course, uh, to uh, assist uh, the young, to assist uh, those um, uh, who may uh, not yet have uh, the ability to understand what change means, obviously we have uh, uh, accumulated uh, all forms of uh, concepts, meaning in the form of religion, in the form of science, in the form of philosophy, in the form of education. Uh, all these are just uh, mediums to help us assist in understanding change, actually. That's the real purpose of it, uh, regardless of uh, uh, which concept is better or not. But at the end of the day, that is the purpose. And so therefore, Buddhism is just uh, another uh, medium uh, trying, uh, which is uh, uh, you know, trying to actually uh, assist us, uh, by us, for us, one could say, uh, something like that, to help us understand change. And uh, um, karma is basically uh, a very simple, yet at the same time, a very vast and uh, profound way of describing change. Because uh, uh, when we just say karma, of course, it's just a very general term. 
Uh, if you dissect that a little bit, it means cause, conditions, and uh, effects. So uh, these three components, uh, uh, when summarized into one word, is karma. And that's what it means. And so none of them, uh, meaning the causes, conditions, um, the results, none of them really independently exist on their own. That they are all interdependent. <clears throat> if one is there, the others are there, just like form and shadow. And so therefore, uh, the uh, meaning of taking care of one's own karma means basically observe the karma. Uh, observe how these conditions uh, rise and observe how these conditions fall. Uh, mm, meaning uh, what goes up must come down is another way of describing karma. And so therefore, uh, the, this precious human existence that we have is one of the greatest platform to help us understand uh, what, um, uh, what this change means. And so it's the greatest window, it's the greatest uh, chance, opportunity that we have to understand. Of course, it's very fleeting, simply by the nature that uh, itself is change. Life itself has changed, this human existence has changed. But nevertheless, uh, mm, it's almost like saying uh, the change, the nature of change itself is offering an opportunity to understand itself. And so therefore, uh, we have been given this opportunity. Of course, uh, it depends on uh, each of us as individuals, how we take it, that this opportunity is given by some uh, unforeseen uh, power uh, or divinity uh, or just by accident or by somebody. It just doesn't matter, really. At the end of the day, uh, all we need to understand is that, um, um, how to say, uh, realize and appreciate uh, this uh, human existence um, that itself is uh, caused, the human condition is caused, uh, itself is the condition and itself is the result. Um, but beyond that, if you try to uh, dig and see, but where is the absolute cause? Where did the uh, chicken actually came from? Is egg the absolute or the other way around? Uh, if you really force it, we will never be able to find the, the absolute uh, cause. Like for example, in this case of uh, outbreak, we are trying to uh, also find which is the patient zero. Uh, how did it break? Um, how, say, how did it uh, come into this? Uh, who is responsible? So we are always trying to find the absolute cause. And it's impossible because the, this, uh, this uh, human existence itself is, how uh, um, to say, uh, appeared in and manifested in such a way that it is naturally subjected to change. And so therefore, anything can be a cause, you see. It uh, doesn't necessarily have to be one particular cause. Uh, for example, <clears throat> accidents or, uh, I mean, the most uh, fearsome thing that we don't want to witness is death, right? And so therefore, uh, simply because of that, we educate the young ones um, not to do this, not to do that, you must do this, you must do that. In short, when we educate them, uh, when we bring them, uh, at the end of the day, uh, it's said, uh, it's conveyed, so such messages were conveyed to them, of course, out of genuine care and love. But nevertheless, there is, uh, at, at, the, at the back of one's mind, let's say, that there is a, some sort of, uh, um, uh, feeling of um, uh, being uh, insecure, uh, somehow doubting uh, one's own, uh, let's say, uh, a composure that um, somehow uh, if, uh, from all the bad things that can happen, one thing that must never ever happen is that we should never change, we should never get sick, we should never age, we should never die. And so that resistance that we have is uh, somehow uh, intertwined uh, in such a way or mixed in such a way 
when we try to actually help, when we try to assist, when we try to educate others. And as a result of it, uh, then although, of course, uh, pure intentions are conveyed, but uh, no matter how uh, young, uh, how, uh, let's say, immature children may be, uh, somehow in time they come to realize something on their subconscious level that uh, I think uh, what my parents, what my friends, what my teachers have been telling me is that I must not die, I must not get, uh, not uh, fall sick. Um, and so therefore, um, how to say, um, this uh, thing that uh, we feel that uh, um, uh, we must uh, not let these um, devast uh, devastating things uh, uh, happen or take place in our lives are caused in such a way and uh, uh, we will uh, never really be able to understand the absolute cause simply because we are the change and uh, uh, anything uh, can actually cause, uh, um, how to say, um, aging. Anything can cause us death. And so therefore, really, there is no real sense of guarantee or security, actually. Having said that, of course, that might cause the biggest panic, the biggest fear. But, um, yeah, it's, um, it's simply, um, uh, how do I say, it's difficult, of course. It's difficult for us to, um, to stay composed. But nevertheless, uh, if it makes sense that we uh, have not necessarily a mission or a duty to save the world, but at least if we think from, from the point of view that we have been given uh, this uh, chance, <clears throat> of course, in the Buddhist way, we would say uh, it's due to the blessings of the Buddhas and Bodhisattvas and the other component, which is our own uh, merit, uh, the combination of those then gave this um, opportunity. That's our way of saying it. Uh, if that's inspiring, please take it that way. Uh, if you feel that it is given by a divinity, you can also take it that way. Even if you feel that um, uh, this opportunity is given, or not necessarily given, but it just simply happened by accident. If you uh, can find uh, some form of uh, confidence, uh, if you think in that way, it does not matter. Whatever way it, uh, uh, it works to give us the confidence and the composure to reflect on how change works, how things are caused, how things uh, condition each other, and how the uh, results actually uh, look like. That's all that matters. That's what it means uh, when I say uh, taking care of one's own karma. It doesn't mean that, oh, you have to become responsible. Because, of course, now, particularly uh, in the light of this uh, now um, outbreak, um, everyone is um, uh, encouraging each other by saying, uh, take uh, responsibility. Um, meaning that, I would say, uh, do not spread the disease uh, um, by doing uh, things that are unnecessary, no matter how important they may seem. And that could, uh, that itself, as well as when I say we have, uh, we as a practitioner, we have to take responsibility, uh, those two, well, both of those can be misunderstood, uh, that uh, <clears throat> as if, uh, it's it's you who did it, and so therefore now uh, take responsibility and take the punishment. You know, it's never meant in that way. Uh, taking care of one's own karma simply means, or make the karma your own, uh, means that uh, you are the karma, you are the change, and the world is change, and so you are the same. We are the same. We are not different at all. We are interdependent, and so therefore. Uh, the most sensible thing, the most noble thing to do is simply to go with that flow of change. And only then uh, we will find some sense of, um, uh, how to say, lack of pressure. That's what it is. Right now, the biggest uh, cause of this panic is coming from this pressure that I must survive. 
at all costs. I must not get sick. And I'm not saying this in a selfish way, but for example, you, uh, you can also think in this way that my loved one must not get sick. My loved ones uh, simply must not lose their lives. And uh, although, of course, it's pure, it's beautiful uh, to have uh, that intensity, to have that enthusiasm, to have that care, but at the same time, uh, that doesn't mean uh, that, how to say, um, uh, that uh, we can uh, give in to this uh, panic of uh, survival. Although, of course, it looks like we are just now uh, uh, planning for uh, survival in terms of how we now uh, prepare to stock up on things, to stock up on various forms of resources, uh, for example, food, uh, water, medicine, um, uh, um, how to say, uh, financial means, uh, all uh, forms of thing, uh, how to say, conditions that we are trying to gather. But, uh, how to say, that itself has no guarantee if you really focus and if you really uh, think uh, clearly that that doesn't really give any real, uh, no, it's, it's, it's not even a um, matter of that according to this calculation, if he store this much of food or this much of water, this much of medicine, this much of, if he take this much of precaution, that it's going to uh, uh, give us this much uh, percentage of uh, survival. Um, <clears throat> Um, although, of course, uh, for uh, others' sake, uh, we have to somehow keep up the appearance, to really uh, say it honestly, that we are doing everything we can. And that's exactly what uh, these um, uh, doctors and nurses and officials are trying to do. Uh, and, uh, they also understand at the back of their mind that there is no real guarantee, but panic is the worst thing uh, that uh, that could happen, and so therefore, in order to ensure that uh, that, is, that panic is not created, they are taking all sorts of measures. But they themselves also know that there is no real guarantee for that, and so therefore, I'm not saying that Buddhism has uh, the solution to all these problems and to liberate ourselves from this pandemic, but. Uh, Personally, uh, what I really find it uh, most beneficial and most uh, reassuring is that uh, if we take care of our own karma, meaning if we observe the change and see that we are the change and this world is the change, everything is simply changing, then uh, it gives us actually extra confidence uh, to actually now um, provide help, provide care, uh, or taking care of ourselves, that we don't uh, somehow doubt ourselves that, uh, yes, of course, um, I must take care of myself, I must take care of others, uh, but at the same time, we kind of uh, know that this, is, uh, this itself is a vicious cycle, but we have no choice, and so we must give in to this. So if you hang on to that, uh, how do I say, habit, if you hang on to that fear, if you hang on to that afflictive emotion, then all we will get is just uh, panic after panic, fear after fear, and uh, uh, then uh, it will amount to nothing. Whereas uh, if you can accept the change, if you can accept karma, uh, not as a punishment, uh, not as a mistake, uh, not as a flaw, uh, because now uh, we could think that uh, um, although, of course, uh, in terms of unifying ourselves um, as, let's say, the human race, of course, this virus uh, um, outbreak uh, can be seen as probably an interesting, uh, uh, how to say, uh, um, factor to help us unite. Meaning, uh, whenever our society is formed, often Strangely enough, uh, it always needs some form of uh, opposition, some form of a villain, let's say. And then, uh, by identifying that villain, 
And under that banner, then we all unite. And in this case, this virus is also doing the same thing, uh, most probably. Uh, and so therefore, um, mm, uh, therefore I say that it's interesting. But uh, and nevertheless, um, just because we are able to stop this disease doesn't mean that uh, that is it, you know. Maybe for a, a brief period, let's say, uh, if uh, within the next few years, uh, if you find the vaccination and so on, maybe for just a few days, maybe for just a few minutes, or maximum maybe for just a few months, we might be finally be able to breathe and to feel some sense of pleasure. But that, it's, that kind of pleasure is, although of course much sought after, but nevertheless, um, it doesn't really mean anything, of course, because right after that, something else can occur. And so therefore, accepting change it seems to be really profound because then we accept, uh, we, have, we give ourselves the confidence uh, to uh, accept uh, change, one, and then due to that, uh, then we feel a sense of lack of pressure, you see, lack of weight. And then that, instead of being a vicious cycle, it's a very, um, uh, how, do I, how do I say it, a very meaningful and very reasonable uh, cycle, let's say. Um, it, it, it will start something like that, where uh, then it, it gives us the confidence to actually go with the change. And uh, while going with the change, then we will be able to uh, give each other confidence also to accept the change. And then uh, now, uh, if you are doctors, if you are nurses, if you are officials, uh, even we will uh, also get the uh, to say confidence to do whatever we can, even if it means just to now um, um, uh, prolong the inevitable or maybe to stop the disease or to, um, how to say reduce the fear and panic, even if all of these just simply means it's a temporary measure. Even then, we will have the energy uh, to, uh, and, and the confidence uh, to be able to perform those tasks. So, um, I'd say that's how I think uh, Buddha Sattvas and Buddhas actually go about uh, their activities, actually. Because uh, 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 them, um, from their, let's say, uh, omniscience or from their wisdom, of course, they know pretty much that change, if you put it in a crude way, uh, then uh, life is already doomed from the very beginning, yes? And so therefore, even they could feel that uh, there's no point to do anything. Just let things be, you know? And uh, then as try and uh, um, take uh, advices like, uh, um, um, uh, let things be and so on uh, in, in a manner like as if there's there's simply nothing you can do about it but uh, it's not like that Buddhas and Buddhas uh, even though they see, see that uh, um, the moment we are born uh, that we are doomed to die sort of thing even if they see it in that way <clears throat> they see that um, constantly uh, by um, providing uh, even if it's just a very temporary breather that's, that also is helpful and that also is meaningful to do. And so therefore, uh, for that kind of reasons, then there are various levels of practices uh, of uh, saying that if you do such practices, it will prolong your life. If you do such practices, it will take away your obstacles. Of course, it just all those are just temporary, of course, but it gives us a breather. And uh, uh, we kind of know that it's false, but it does help us. And so therefore, um, we will be able to gain confidence if you are able to accept change, accept karma, and make it your own uh, without uh, this sort of um, putting it in a, a crude way of saying that it's a, a sort of punishment uh, because of my own doing in, from the past or because of our doing from the past, by simply embracing the karma that we are change and uh, uh, there is uh, no need to feel embarrassed about it. There is no need to feel uh, a sense of uh, guilt uh, that 
um, that um, uh, I am um, not going to, let's say, be permanent. Uh, I'm not going to um, be, uh, how to say, the, the ground or the rock for everyone, you know. So uh, if we are able to accept that we are change and uh, that the rest of the, of, let's say, like a branch of change, which is everything around in this ecological world, the virus itself, you see, this is very important to focus, I feel. You never know. Uh, uh, viruses, of course, now uh, from a medical point of view or from a scientific point of view, uh, it might be, uh, mm, it, it may be difficult to uh, categorize uh, mm, uh, them as uh, sentient beings, but you never know. Maybe they are also. Maybe they are, after all, they are living and breathing and thriving. They this do seem to have that kind of... Uh, uh, ability, so you never know. Maybe they are also um, living, breathing sentient beings, and so that means, uh, if that's the case, then they are the change, and we are the change, <clears throat> and we are no different. Temporarily, if you can find a way to somehow now let this disease sort of flow uh, in a much more natural course, let's say, uh, by means of medicine, by means of precaution. <clears throat> Uh, of course, it's great, but nevertheless, uh, whatever uh, direction that this uh, disease may take us, um, um, we, uh, as practitioners, one could say, we, you know, even if we're just assuming ourselves as practitioners, uh, we must never, uh, how does it, give up and. Um, let go that we have the best chance, the best solution, which is this um, time, this space, this uh, rebirth that we have, where we can finally accept change. For so many countless of lives before, uh, we have denied over and over again um, from accepting change. And uh, I don't mean to say that because of that now, uh, we are uh, suffering its consequences uh, in a sort of crude way. But uh, out of that confusion, out of that denial, uh, something beautiful has emerged, which is this life. And so it's not really our duty, it's not our mission, but it's sensible, it's most interesting, it's most beautiful if we can make use of this life to accept change. And this is my fervent wish. This is what I wanted to convey. Uh, as always, of course, um, uh, when I say something, um, um, how to say, uh, the English being not my uh, mother tongue, and even uh, in Tibetan also, uh, although I'm supposed to be a Tibetan, um, how to say, I'm also equally not as fluent uh, I should be, as I should be in Tibetan, so therefore, due to those uh, uh, lack of, uh, let's say, um, usage of the languages. Sometimes it may be causing confusions uh, to you as uh, the audience or listeners. So for that, I truly apologize. But nevertheless, um, uh, I'm just, as I always say, thinking out loud and uh, making use of this uh, technological means to uh, maybe sort of uh, hear, hear my thoughts, let's say. So uh, I hope that it will be of some benefit for all of you. I thank you so much for taking time uh, to, uh, to hear these uh, um, uh, thoughts. Uh, and uh, as always, I'm praying for all of us um, in uh, um, for whatever it's worth. Uh, I am doing my best to pray for all of us. Uh, that uh, not only we will be that, that not only we will be able to overcome this disease, but uh, uh, that we will be able to actually understand change, understand how things, um, how to say, um, how things uh, function. So uh, then, hopefully, uh, I will be able to 
um, I have the courage to uh, share with you uh, in the near future uh, some of my thoughts like these, uh, whether they are beneficial or not. Uh, on a fundamental level, I don't know, but uh, I'll do my best uh, if it helps. Um, but now, beside that, uh, then, uh, uh, how to say, um, while thinking of what I said, if it's meaningful, then now try to, uh, how to say, um, channel what you understood through uh, our, um, how to say, uh, our formal uh, practices or through our formal methods. For example, uh, just earlier uh, I recorded uh, the um, Sharizik meditation in Tibetan. So, uh, um, means like that, uh, sadhanas, uh, uh, meditational guides, uh, all of these are um, a channel, a way to help us channel uh, what we uh, deeply understand. And so then uh, I would like to ask all of you, whenever you find time uh, to uh, meditate, uh, and I always meditate together, so, uh, but uh, um, I'm sure uh, and that when I say that, actually I've always said it in the past, uh, no matter where we are, no matter how far we are from each other, uh, the one moment where we are all together is when we meditate. And so therefore, uh, regardless of distance and time and space, when I'm meditating, uh, then I know that whoever is meditating, uh, we are there together. And so that's the case, I think. Mm, actually, that is the case. So thank you so much, uh, everyone. Uh, please uh, stay uh, strong strong in terms of um, um, not just put up a good front, you know, but uh, to uh, stay strong in a way that how to say, you see that you have the best opportunity. Thank you so much.